Hello everyone, you lovely folks, and welcome back to the Brightworks. Today, taking a look at Star Watcher. Ooh, did I get that right? Yes, I did. Star Watcher. That was a close one. Almost forgot. <laughs> Star Watcher today, a uh, interesting map. Very wide open map. A lot of metal spots spread out here and there. All the same value? No, actually I'm wrong about that. I'm noticing that most of them are two. However, there are a few here in the middle of the map that are three. So that's quite nice. Uh, but most of most of the map is covered in the same type of metal spot. So this is definitely one of those maps that where covering an area of the map is more important than covering a specific strategic spot. Very similar to all the glitters, if you're familiar with that map. Uh, just left to right as opposed to top to bottom. So let's meet our teams on left to right, shall we? On the eastern half, spawning here as the blue team leader, we have laughing. Laughing we've seen play a couple times, and uh, I'm excited to show them off in a game. Really, really love to see these uh, interesting strategies come out, and it looks like Laughing is in a bit of a backline position here, so probably going to be going for maybe some tech, maybe some air. Something very interesting for sure. Spawning on the western half for our red team. Red team leader, Evolved Monkey. He wears a suit, he wears a tie, he's got a top hat, and plenty... Uh, of enemies to die. <laughs> I don't know, trying to make a rhyme out of that. Anyway, Evolve Monkey, well-known player, needs no introduction. We've seen him here, we've seen him there, and we're going to see him once more today as we watch what goes down here. Uh, also in a backline position. So both of our team leaders are in a bit of a backline position here, so I'm excited to see. Maybe we're going to see a little bit of a tech shenanigan, maybe some tech cheese, maybe a little bit of an early eco rush. Interesting in, interesting strategies will surely be a pound in plenty. Uh, wind speed on this map, I'm curious to see. Wow, Windrest is 16.4. That's actually really high. Um, yeah, I wouldn't trust wind on this map. It seems deceptively high, right? 12 is pretty good, but 16.4 wind percentage. Um, yeah, that's not good at all. So I would, I would definitely say maybe this is a map to go for those advanced solar panels instead of a big, big, big wind, windmill farm. Um... Looks like most of these players disagree with me, though, and I, you know, the, the, I probably would disagree with myself, too, if I was playing in the game. I, I probably would build wind, but now that I'm looking at it, I'm going to have to change up my play style because this, uh, this, this wind speed is actually not great. Sorry about that, if you heard a little buzz. We've got a little bit of an expansion back here. For the most part, these players are just getting up and started. Uh, no units sent across the map. I don't know who to award the first unit out on the field award to. Um, certainly orange had some units out very quickly, as well as this hot pink player here. We've got some blue ticks on the field. Yeah, it looks like we've got some ticks out. Very nicely done. Got some rovers as well. Um, I'm going to give it to bright pink here. Hot pink, I should say. Swing as. Swing as has gotten the, uh, the official get a unit out on the field award for putting these rovers across the map in a duly manner. Ooh, although orange is probably rightly tied for that position as well. Getting these rovers across. Very nicely done. A little bit of a rover battle here. Ooh, friendly fire. <laughs> Sending shards of scrap metal across the map. Absolutely devastating. Ah, uh, the rovers have found the air player. That is really unfortunate. This air player is going to be in quite a bit of trouble. The admiral is going to have to respond here. Otherwise, a lot of critical infrastructure is about to go down. We do have a light laser turret in the main base, but of course that doesn't protect this side of the base. Uh, it also doesn't protect these outlying metal extractors, so these rovers are going to get quite a lot of damage. Yeah, that's one one unfortunate part about starting air, is that you don't have any sort of way to defend yourself from attacks on the ground. You're really heavily relying on your teammates to do that. And uh, as we can see here, this is just becoming a problem. <laughs> we need to see these rovers addressed, otherwise the Admiral is going to be stuck in a precarious position here for a long time. You don't want to build a bot lab, right? Because then you've spent too much metal already. Oh, luckily for the Admiral, those rovers walk right into the commander's range. And that is going to shut down that early game aggression. Anything up north so far, mostly all the aggression has been down south. Looks like up north things have been mostly calm. Uh, a little bit of shenanigans over here. Wow, we've already got some mines out on the field. That is quite interesting. Oh, those are for the green player. Oh, that that is really interesting. So we sent a mine layer across to trap this entire area. That's really clever. I actually like that quite a lot. Very interesting strategy, but I, yeah, I, I, I quite like that. Uh, a little bit of early early aggression here. Mole Man taking a hit on the chin, but uh, nothing too serious here. Maybe more like a slap. A light uh, a light fist to cuffs, if you will. 
Uh, is that the three middle spot, by the way, or the, the higher middle spot? It looks like it is indeed. So that's really nice for Mole Man getting control of those, as well as RTX holding control over these, these rich metal spots. Is this a rich metal spot as well? No, it is not. Yeah, so very nice. The the blue team, although it doesn't seem like a very tremendous lead here, it definitely is. And we're, we're going to see this eco scaling happen a whole lot quicker for whatever team can control more area of the map. Now, there's a lot of empty metal extractors here that absolutely need to be taken as quickly as possible. We do have a construction bot on the back line here trying to build its way up to the front here. Uh, very nicely done. We need to see these air constructors building all these metal extractors. Uh, looks like purple will get these ones, so this is the only metal extractor left over, so that is very, very nice. We've got a few untapped over here as well. That's just bound to happen on these big open maps. One or two of them will be missed, but eventually they'll be picked up by whoever's over there. Commander now trying to uh, get rid of these mines that have been laid over here. This, is, this could actually be a really big problem. If you decide to move some units through this field, uh, especially something light, like a bunch of pawns or, or grunts or something like that, yeah, you could definitely uh, you could definitely step on one of these light mines and have a really bad time. Very interesting strategy. We do have some vehicles out on the front line for swing S. We are yeah we're pumping out these vehicles. We're, we're getting some Janus up to the front lines. We're getting some of these uh, some some medium tanks, some artillery, all sorts of good pieces here. Uh, we did start up an advanced solar panel. I think I would like to see some energy converters come up. I've actually changed my mind completely about energy converters. I, I'm now suddenly in the boat where I think energy converters are absolutely worth it. I've started building a whole lot of them. Especially when, the ener when I notice that I'm overflowing a crazy amount of energy, or even if the team is wasting energy, especially if the team is wasting energy. Just to start spamming out some uh, energy converters with, with one uh, construction unit. And it's actually really changed the economy game for me. I've started to realize that suddenly that one or two extra metal per second eventually adds up to a really really nice boost in the economy and i've had great success great success as borat might say um yeah anyway that spiel aside build build energy converters especially if your team is wasting energy rocket wars here on the front lines this is always prone to happen in these matches rocketeers take over on the front lines as the uh, the long range artillery unit here until at least the vehicles come out to play. That's uh, like this right here, what you can see RTX is doing. We've got the forward vehicle lab, and then we've got the rear bot lab. That's that's a really common strategy right now, and uh, I, I quite like it. I think that's really effective. You can get the artillery, which is much more long range than the rocket bots, uh, but you also can have the mobile presence, like these grunts here in a posture, and make sure that the enemy can't at least cost effectively push into your army, which is really, really nice. Yeah, these Wolverines being a real pain. Launching projectiles from way far back here, and they can certainly tear down a whole lot of these, uh, a whole a whole lot of this static defense, as well as any of these units that are going to make a presence on the front lines here. Really like what RTX is doing. I think this is definitely a, a really nice meta. The reason this is even possible, by the way, is because uh, once you claim all this, you're usually up to about 30 metal per second. This is pretty common on a lot of maps, actually, to be up around 30, 30 to 40 metal per second. So as long as you don't have too much build power allocated either to this building over here, the, the vehicle lab, or to the bot lab here, you're going to be in a really nice spot. Now, RTX is overflowing quite a lot of energy. Uh, luckily, there are teammates here who need the energy, so that metal, or that energy, rather, at the very least, isn't being wasted. If you're wasting energy, that's unfortunate, because that could definitely be more metal in your pockets. But for now, we are just seeing uh, artillery wars as they shell each other to death. Beamers on the front line, but they're helpless against this artillery, which can outrange them by quite a bit. Uh, and so, indeed, these beamers will eventually slowly go down to the Wolverine that are pushing forward here. We have riot tanks coming out. Those are quite nice. Great, great idea to fold some of those in with your army to prevent any sort of uh, raiding unit, any sort of early uh, mass harassment unit, especially like ticks or a uh, huge pawn army, anything like that. Well done to Swing Ez, realizing that they're going to lose this position here. I don't like the static defense we're putting up. I think I think this is probably just a waste of metal to, to put these turrets together, considering they're just going to be shot down by the wolverines but i guess it works as a stalling mechanism if we're waiting for maybe air support or some sort of tech support uh, i just noticed evolved monkey is handing out t2 constructors here um yeah it looks like he gave at, at least one of them away i didn't see there was there was probably more uh, but yeah we're, we're handing out t2 constructors which is quite nice 
One thing I've been working on, especially if uh, I'm teching up here, I play Armada, of course, and, and uh, when, when I'm teching up here is trying to go for the vehicle lab instead of the bot lab. That way you get the, the T2 vehicle constructor as well as the console, which allows you to build those T2 units. Very, very nice if you're, uh, if you're looking for a way to contribute just a little bit more to those, those early uh, frontline engagements. Because those consoles can build those gunslingers, they can build the, um, the hounds, which are really nice as well. All that good stuff. Yeah, these mines doing a really good job of softening up this army quite a lot. Yeah, a lot of these tanks that were looking really healthy are suddenly left with very low health. Really nicely done. Really good hold. Really good use of those mines. You don't see those used very, very, uh, enthusiastically. <laughs> very often here. Uh, we're starting up the jammer now. I think that's a good idea. I think we might have wanted that a little bit, a little bit, uh, earlier here. But better late than never, I suppose. We've got a lot of wrecks on the front lines here. Yeah, we can see all the metal that's left on the front. Whoa, huge force of T1 medium tanks have actually pushed through now. Uh, this is really dangerous. We don't have a great response here. Uh, yeah, we had the T2 factory almost done, but we are forced to eat it up in order to produce a bunch of units. That really hurts, and especially since we're stalling so heavily on metal. Yeah, or uh, energy, rather, sorry. Energy energy hasn't been up to scale for the orange player here, Birdie, and so unfortunately now there's not enough units to really contest these tanks properly. Janus is pretty good, but again, it only fires every and you know every so often, very slowly. Uh, and so yeah, this is this is gonna hurt. The already the already uh, sub subpar energy production here for Birdie is now even it's, I mean, it's being torn down even worse. Uh, a lot of these windmills going down. If these build power or if these uh, construction turrets go down, it'd be the end of the world here. But it looks like they will stay up. All right, very nice. The team has rallied together in order to keep Birdie alive. Very nicely done. Birdie now forced to restart production of that uh, that T2 lab here. I'd love to see some advanced solar panels. I think we might as well jump up to that since we have so much metal. There's also now plenty of metal left on the ground here. But I guess we need some of these windmills in order to get enough energy production to fully step up to uh, fully step up to that. Oh, that's very nice. Evolved Monkey handing out a windmill here. Well, several windmills to Birdie in order to help get that eco back up and running. That is a really nice play, really, really good. If you, uh, you, you can always look in this, this corner on the right-hand side here, over on the, the bottom right-hand corner. When you're in a match, there'll be indicators, there'll be a square, like a silver square for metal, and a little, I think it's a lightning bolt, but a little yellow indicator for the energy reading. And when those are flashing red next to your teammate, that means that they're stalling on that resource. And so if you have extra, you can always send it to that specific person, and a lot of times that'll really help out your teammates especially when they're close to finishing up a building. Uh, it'll, it'll, it'll let them finish it up without having to uh, worry about building up their economy a little bit more. Bing Bing Bang is doing a great job of pushing forward here. In fact, this is a really scary army, although Mole Man is counterattacking here, which is probably going to force his entire army to retreat, or at the very least counterattack. And that's another possibility. Yeah, we're going to counterattack here, which I think is a good idea. Uh, we might want to use the commander on this. That is a lot of beamers, though. Those beamers can do tremendous work against these medium tanks. Certainly can burn these down extremely quickly. When they're working in unison like that, yeah, they can do a ton of damage. Ooh, they walk into a minefield here. Excellent use of these mines. You know, I'm really, really liking what we're doing with the mines here. That's very nicely done. It leaves these wrecks on the field, too, so you can eat up all the metal, but it softens them up at basically no cost to you. Super efficient. Really enjoying the mine play here. A lot of Centurions sandwiched now, these medium tanks. We even have some T2 units out on the field at this point. 13 minutes into the game, I guess we're uh, expected to see that by now. Oh, we got some gunships taking down an agitator. That's quite nice. That's a very effective way to do that. These gunships, you have to make sure you use them in just the right way here. Oh, we have an abductor here. That's interesting. Oh, it misses its shot. That's unfortunate. It does take quite a while for them to charge up that EMP beam. When they do, it can be quite devastating, though. Oh, as long as they hit. <laughs> yeah, not doing very well with that EMP beam. We're trying to, uh, we're trying to take these down with the welder here. Eventually the welder does get it, but there's still some gunships here. Uh, we have fighters, so the fighters are gonna mop this up eventually. 
gunships in a little bit of trouble from this uh, this fighter harassment here. Oh, but the gunships do manage to take down the lab. That is quite nice. Janices are rolling in here, taking advantage of that position. Bing Bing Bang has been forced off of the front line here, forced to deal with this intrusion into the back line, which means that the uh, the front line push was devastated. Now we see Mauser coming out for Troll Hard GoPro. That's a pretty funny name. I'd love to see these metal extractors being upgraded. It looks like, yeah, we do have a cute, so that's quite nice. Whichever team can upgrade their metal extractors first is usually going to be in a much better position here. I do like the inclusion of just one of these uh, abductors here. It can paralyze things really, really nicely. Cook them up very quickly. Fry their circuitry. And it paralyzes them for a long time, too. That's another important thing. I think it was up to 12 seconds there that it was it was paralyzed. So that's really, really nice. More forces pushing forward. RTX actually in a little bit of trouble. Although the shurikens are here to save the day. So that is quite nice indeed. EMP bombers also being quite devastating to these forces. Although they hit more friendly forces than anything. <laughs> we are eventually going to take down these units here and we're going to push right into the defenses here. Oh, although a lot of the tanks getting stuck on their brethren. That is unfortunate to see. Centurion also not spread out perfectly here, so their their firepower is limited. Uh, limited, but gargantuan. <laughs> they can really put out a devastating amount of laser fire here. Their twin laser accelerator cannons are not to be underestimated. Oh, those Janus missiles. Even more powerful, though. Overall, that is quite a lot of metal. If we take a look at the uh, the scanner vision here, we can see 4,500 metal left in wreckages on the front line, and there's not a tremendous unit presence to conquer all this. I'd love to see some missile trucks come out here. Those missile trucks are anti-air. Aha, look at that. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Well done by Swingas. The caster curse, sometimes it works in your favor, sometimes it works against your favor, and there's no way to tell which one it's going to be in the moment. Mauser are moving forward here. Slowly. And they're going to start raining death from afar. Wow, those projectiles. Those are so devastating. Accurate? No. Devastating? Yes. <laughs> are these... Okay, these are just dragon's teeth, not anything else. Uh, we're going for another minefield. I'd love to see we start upgrading to medium mines. Those are only 16 metal, and they will deal with these medium tanks much, much better. Uh, I think it's like two mines to take down one of those medium tanks. So for a combined total cost of, what would that be, uh, 32 metal? Using using Minecraft math there. 32 metal to take down a tank. Absolutely, phenomenally efficient, especially considering the wreckage is most likely to be there, and you're probably going to catch more than one tank. I think it's definitely worth it to build those medium mines over the small ones. Uh, looks like we do have a Mercury firing from the back line here. Very nice. You do love to see it. Those long-range anti-air turrets can be especially devastating early on in the game when a bomber run might not be suspecting it. A little bit of a push right here. I'd love to see some res bots. There they are, moving in here. 3.8 thousand metal to eat up in this wreckage right here, and I think that's definitely going to be worth it. Front lines are starting to be drawn. We have the puddle, the puddle sitters over here. <laughs> Looks like Trollhard GoPro is content to uh, route all the units right into the water here. We're slowly dismantling this front line. No rush on that. Might as well just take our time here. Oh, something is firing from really far away. Wow, Rattlesnake with a tremendous amount of range on it. Just barely out of reach. Very nice to see. That front line is now disassembled, and so this army can march if it wants to. But that is a lot of forces here. I don't think it beats a T2 army, but it definitely could crash on top of all of these artillery, and that could be a very, very expensive, uh, ex expensive force to lose here. Lots of lightning tanks coming up. At this point, I would love to see some bulls, too. I think mixing in a bull or two would be really, really nice. Just start the unit production for those. They're going to come out really slowly, but while you're not under any pressure, getting one or two of those out would be really, really critical in shutting down that early T1 tank production. Reclaim bots on the front line starting to pick apart this massive metal field that was left on the field over here. Missile trucks getting hard at work. Getting hard at work. Hard at work. <laughs> Yikes. YouTube's not going to like me after that one. Uh, hard at work tearing down a lot of those ticks here. Very, very good for, good at that because of those uh, heat-seeking missiles, which allows them to be very accurate, even against those tiny little ticks. 
more centurions marching forward. The beamer turrets. We all know how to how to you know how to be afraid of these. <laughs> we all know to fear these. I guess is what I'm trying to say here. We've seen the uh, the Nostradamus maneuver, and we're all well well aware of exactly how fear how terrifying those sh those things are. We're struggling with my words today. It looks like we've got a lot of resbots on the front line. A lot of stuff was pieced together up here on the front. We've got a nice little contingent of bulls here, and these are more than enough to shut down whatever little push is coming forward here. Tanks marching forward. Yeah, those are just going to melt into that bull fire. Janices, same difference. Uh, yeah, all these T1 units are basically going to evaporate when those bulls start firing. Look how powerful those things are. Absolute beasts of a unit. They can fire while they're moving. They do so much damage. Really, really good stuff. We do see bulls for purple. The purple player also has their own up on the front lines, which is quite nice. I would love to see the... Uh, oh, we're actually going to repair our own. That's really nice. Very nicely done. I wonder if that's why these are here in the first place. Like, that was the plan. Uh, looks like... Yeah, we're going we're gonna to pull them out just in time. That's good. Uh, fighters move in. And we've got some EMP bombers. Ooh, very nice. Oh. All right, a little bit of a little bit of a whiff there, but we do have the fighters to keep these safe while they're uh, operating in enemy territory, and they are going to retreat just in time as the enemy fighters do push forward here. Oh, one of the bulls goes down. There are Mauser in the back line. Those are really nice. It's a good way to contribute a lot of long-range fire support here. Ooh, the bulls are getting scuffed up, but they are not dead yet. Very nicely done. Oh, a bunch of sprinters routed through the bottom of the map here. Oh, this could be devastating. There's not a whole lot to answer to this. The bulls are starting to move down that direction. The one that was closest does get taken out, though. Ooh, are the bulls going to catch him? I think they will. Nicely done, moving those bulls in just in time here. We've got resbots eating off the front lines. That's very nice to see. It looks like the northern half of the map is still stagnant. We do have a few of these gremlins, these stealth tanks. Ah, we are going for those medium mines. Very nice. We're going to mix them right into the, the middle of this massive minefield here. Love to see those stealth tanks used somewhere. Uh, not a whole lot of options, though. These front lines are becoming very, very rigid. Things are starting to become uh, standard here. Actually going to speed up the game to 2x. It's a bit of a long one, so I want to get through this in a timely manner. Keep it YouTube friendly. Not that that's ever really been a concern. Ah, Marauder fight here. Uh, yeah, it looks like the green Marauders are going to win. They do push forward, but reinforcing Marauders are going to come out and eventually be enough to mop up all of these forces. So that is quite nice. Ah, there was Flak brought to the front line too. That's very nice. Very, very nicely done. That, of course, is absolutely necessary to ward off those EMP bombers. Keep those out of your hair. Those can be really, really devastating. Bulls are actually a pretty decent counter to Marauders. A Marauder costs 970, a Bull costs 950. So for the metal cost, yeah, that's definitely a uh, definitely right around the same level. Bulls are just barely under a T3 unit, and Marauders are just barely a T3 unit. <laughs> so you get, a, uh, you get an interesting mix there. Ambassadors here firing these long-range heavy rockets, which are super, super good at taking down, well, basically anything. There's not really anything that those rockets are unhappy to completely demolish here. I like these resbots on the front lines. We are piecing together an army out of the dead. Really nicely done here. Birdie showing us that they know what they're up to. Uh, EMP bombers here stopping a little bit of a Marauder run by. Friendly Marauder to mop up most of this. Ooh, the fighters come in here. Big fighter clash. Looks like the blue fighters will prevail, but a lot of the EMP bombers went down. There's still a ton, though. Four EMP bombers are still out, and that's enough to, at the very least, slow down this push. I would love to see those rerouted down that direction. Oh, there's anti-air over here. Ah, the flak has returned. Oh, oh okay. Bombers were uh, a little confused there. Weren't sure what they should be doing. <laughs> that is unfortunate. These, these bulls and marauders push forward. That was a great idea to include that anti-air because it definitely shut down those EMP bombers. I think the EMP bombers had a chance, but not when the anti-air or not when the EMP bombers were so confused. Uh, and indeed, these bulls completely stormed through the bottom of the map here. Teriyaki's base is completely wiped away. Purple in a lot of trouble too. There's a lot of bulls, and they're pushing straight for the advanced fusion reactor. They know what they're going after. The Aethys is going down, and it blows up right in Kidro's face. 
purple is set back tremendously and now a huge portion of the map is going to be exposed to the red team. We're going to have to see some really, really dedicated defense coming out of the back line if we want to keep these players in the game and kicking. We also need to see some constructors sent over there and we do indeed see an air constructor handed over. 23,000 metal left over right here, yeah. Uh, teriyaki can use a constructor too, that player is also out of the game. Uh, we do have a lab building over here, that's quite nice. We have barely any metal production though, so that is a problem. I'd love to see maybe some of these resbots coming and picking up some of the debris over here. Razorback battle. Very nice. Very cool. Laser fire. Two and a half thousand metal in each one of these wreckages, by the way. And we're picking up these fallen Razorbacks as well, which is really nice. Be able to reinforce using the enemy's fallen, fallen troops. Yeah, very nicely done. Ah, nice. We are starting to resurrect a lot of this stuff. Very good. Twitchers here to uh, eat up a lot of this stuff on the front as well. They can also build defenses. They can they can do all sorts of stuff. Twitchers are a very, very powerful unit here. The uh, lab is up and running. I would love to see some construction turrets built by maybe a couple of these Twitchers over there in that direction. Looks like we have a T2 delivery here. Very nicely done. Or maybe we're not delivering it. Maybe we're just uh, defending with it. That is a huge presence of units in the middle of the map here for the yellow player. Red is protecting it all with these Razorbacks, which is really nicely done. Razorbacks, of course, absolutely uh, excellent against countering this spam here. So these grunts are not going to get any work done, especially not against those Razorbacks. Big scouting wave here, trying to get a look around, see what they can find, but they don't manage to find a whole lot. Look at this minefield right here. This is absolutely impassable. <laughs> Nothing is going get, to get through there. Nothing at all. Take a look at the metal map here. You can see, wow, 30,000, 35,000. I mean, there's an entire economy's worth of metal left over on the front line here. These Razorbacks are sacrificed in order to tear down a whole lot of this, uh, a whole lot of these units. Starlight's going down, Vanguard in a whole lot of trouble. Everything here is in, is in, in over its head. Single Razorback. Ooh, it does get bursted down by those Starlights that do decide to turn around and fire on it. But that means that these Grunts are able to push forward here. And we are feeding all of this metal back to the team here. We have tons and tons of resbots eating up this front line. I'd actually love to see more resbots pumped out here and then resurrecting. Because there is a tremendous army left over here. There's tons of Razorbacks that would absolutely serve us very nicely. I think that would be phenomenal. Single Thor over here. Going to be more than enough to deal with any of this uh, shenanigans. EMP missile to stun some of this stuff. You know, the Starlights are pretty good. Maybe I spoke a little too early about that. There's also some Razorbacks out, and those are definitely going to be enough to push back this Thor. Starlights keep pushing forward. These are really, really nice at bursting down these units. They're sort of the vehicle equivalent to the Sharpshooter, which is very nice. Another scouting wave here. We're trying to take a look around again, but we really haven't been able to find very much. In fact, let's take a look at the, the red team's vision here. Okay, so we sort of roughly know where everybody's located. We haven't seen this back corner much, but we have found the airfields, and the, or the wind fields rather, and the fusion reactors and everything. We found, we basically located all the colors, and we more or less know the green is back here because of this massive minefield and the unit presence in this direction. 10, 10 to 0 marauders. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but uh, I, uh, I agree with marauders. <laughs> Certainly those are a great unit here. Massive marauder storm moving up, up north here. Loads of them moving in, fighting these bulls. The bulls are great, again, encountering these marauders, but uh, that is a ton of marauders. The real, the real speciality of the Marauder is that it's so fast. They can run just super, super quickly. Now a bunch of this army is pulled away from the front lines in order to go clean all that up. But it looks like those bulls will handle it phenomenally. Very nice. Very nice to see indeed. Razorbacks folded into the front lines here. Store is back in action. Nice and patched up. Yeah, this is very tense here. We're building some frontline defense. We've got these uh, tachyon accelerators. We've got some anti-air flat guns, flat batteries. Ah, we have a Titan moving forward too. Very nice. Getting right into the proper end game here. 
Yeah, I'd love to see a big line of sharpshooters. This is such a wide area. Sharpshooters could get immense value if you build, I don't know, 100 of them. <laughs> you just spread them out in a big line right here. They could get so much value shooting away at any of these units right here. Titan is forcing this army to consider retreating here. That's a lot of starlights, though. Yeah, they could definitely burn this thing down pretty quickly. It's like 1 or 2% every time one of these fires. Oh, an EMP missile is launched. Two EMP missiles are launched. Oh, those are great connections here. Pauses every single one of those starlights. And now all of these Razorbacks are actually in trouble because their supporting starlights are left in the dust. Oh, the Thor now in trouble. Everything is un EMP'd. Back and active. Titan is looking pretty bad. It's at 13% health. It's trying to get in there and get in the fight, but it doesn't really want to. We're trying to keep these units alive as, as much as possible here. I'd love to see these, these Starlights EMP'd again. If we could land more EMPs like that, now that the Razorbacks are gone, this entire army would collapse. Yep, there's an EMP missile. Very nicely done. That's a huge bunch of the Starlights. It's like half of them. Maybe a little less than half of these Starlights completely wiped away here. They're also explosive, so when you shoot them, yep, there they go. <laughs> and indeed, they all flash off the face of the Earth here. Uh, yeah, all of those Starlights are completely wiped out. Most of them were wiped out by their own explosions. Although some of them by devastating force. A lot of gunships out here. These are the Roughnecks. Interesting gunship choice. Wow, those Mercuries landed some huge hits, though, and every single one of those is down to really low health, but that was a great degun by the commander there. Commander managed to take down one of the Titans. We have Resbots here, trying to uh, keep these keep these units alive. They patched up the Titan really nicely, and now they're going to patch up this Thor as well. We're also resurrecting a lot of these Razorbacks off the front lines, which is a great idea. Oh, are we going to get this one up? We do get the Razorback up in time. That is nice. Oh, the Razorback falls, though. <laughs> it was nice while it lasted. This push is looking pretty devastating. That is a lot of hounds. That's a lot of grunts, too. These hounds are pushing pretty far forward. I'm worried that they're going to get collapsed on here. Ah, yeah, these grunts could really collapse on top of this really nicely. Yep, the grunts move in. Yeah, I guess they can't cover that much ground. Those hounds have to be careful. If they get surrounded, they're definitely going to get de devastated, destroyed, reduced to atoms. We have vanguards up on this hill, shielding down artillery. We also have enemy vanguards, the red, red vanguards here, shelling away from a long distance. This is quickly turning into a battle of sieges. missiles launched. Doesn't manage to connect with anything too substantial here. Titans are still guarding this front line. Razorbacks are marching forward, but they should be no no match for these Titans. Their, their uh, lasers are quite devastating here. Almost killing a single Razorback between the two of them. Between their two lasers. We don't have a spam of units, though, to counter this, this flood of units that's rushing past the Titans here. <laughs> Suntry on USA says, man, my PC is shit. Take my units if you want. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, when these games devolve into this this higher uh, higher unit spam, it, it becomes really difficult for anybody to to play. The, the, the PC demands increase exponentially. Uh, 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 we're chugging along. <laughs> This tick spam is really difficult to deal with. We've got hundreds, if not thousands, of ticks moving forward here. Causing, uh, at the very least, a lot of chaos. And indeed, the armies are starting to march forward. Tons of these shurikens are here on the front lines, though, and with the fighter support, these shurikens can actually get a lot of work done, paralyzing a whole bunch of these hounds, effectively taking them out of commission. EMP, wow, EMP bombers, too. And lots of them. This is the real force, though. This is what we have to be afraid of. Tons of these Razorbacks and uh, 
and Thor is pushing forward here. All looking very healthy, too. We need some sort of urgent response here, otherwise this is going to devastate this base. At this point, I think they've made it too far, and there's not a whole lot more that you can do. Marauders are trying to move into place, but every one of these Thors, that, uh, every time these Thors fire, it melts four or five of them. Completely devastates it, and I think this base is as good as gone. This might, this might warrant a, uh, a D-gun. This little contingent of forces here. The Razorbacks are finally gone, which means we could, uh, we could send in air support here, but there's no, I mean, you can't paralyze these Thors, right? So, not really a huge sense in, in doing that. Uh, down south, uh, the push is looking pretty rough, too. The Titans, of course, stand guard against the uh, the incoming waves of units here, but it's it's just uh, inevitable that eventually a few are going to squeak through. Loads of stealth tanks here. I'd love to see these being used. Move them forward somewhere. Try and get them into a nice position. Titans are walking down south. They're going to continue battling here. Try and speed up the game, but we're already at a game speed of 0.89. <laughs> There's not a whole lot more I can do. There's too many units on the field. And we're just going to have to sit back and enjoy the devastation. Wow, huge part of that minefield blew up. I think it was probably chain reacted, if I had to guess. They were very close to each other, so it's, it's likely that they chain reacted there. What are the backline ecos looking like for all these teams? Um, yeah, it looks like laughing is still scaling very nicely. That's lovely to see. Evolved Monkey also has a beautiful economy back here. Loads of energy converters, loads of uh, build power available to build up more of these advanced fusion reactors. Bing Bing Bang also doing a great job of building up here. We've got tons of advanced fusion reactors, we've got a tremendous economy, and we can't even spend all of the metal that we have here. We need more build power. Looks like there's a little bit of a pause there. Uh, the, uh, the player that was complaining that they couldn't control their units has uh, decided to tap out, so Bing Bing Bang is going to take control of their units for them. Oh, some of these vanguards accidentally friendly firing here on a bunch of ticks that are running into the base. You hate to see it. You also love to see it, though. Friendly fire, using friendly fire to your advantage is uh, definitely a strategy. It does work. Loads of ticks moving forward. Their, uh, their fate is, uh, well, let's just say with that minefield in place, their fate is sealed. <laughs> Not a whole lot that they're going to do to break through that. Again, tons of these starlights here, but as soon as just a few of them light up right in the middle there, this entire cluster is going to explode like a Christmas tree. Not that I've seen many exploding Christmas trees, but you get the idea. Ooh, come on. There it is. And they all go down. <laughs> a lot of people underestimate exactly how explosive those things are, but they do. They explode like an energy converter. They are, they are super, super explosive. Thor does get degunned by RTX's commander here. I'd love to see the commander step over in this direction to start degunning some of these as well. Probably be very beneficial to get those out of your hair as quick as possible. And now the counter spam is out, and it is pushing back quite far. Yeah, this is actually becoming a problem for the red team now, as the, the spam envelops their own. <laughs> One unit after the other, and not a whole lot more to do. Oh, looks like the commander was left over here and it did explode, scuffing up a whole lot of these units. It's a lot of vanguards, though. And uh, it's going to be hard to push through that many vanguards regardless of what you do. Thors as well. They're very good against spam, as we all know. They're not very good at locking onto targets, though, so they do have a problem with these ticks, where the ticks force them to turn their cannons to, to aim at them. Um, which means that they actually can, can have a bit of an issue there. Ah, uh, the stealth tanks march forward. Yeah, there's a gap here. We can slip them through. That's what she said. No. No. Uh, ooh, they're being... They're being found out, though. And there is a there is a lightning tank right there. Oh, don't let the lightning tank spot you. Yeah, they're forced to retreat here. <laughs> they could go up and around, maybe? Uh... Okay, yeah, they're just going to pass when the Thor goes past. Yeah, that's a great idea here. Now, there is smoke trailing off of a bunch of these, so that is... You, you, you can see that when you're uh, 
when you're looking for those. <laughs> you see the smoke right here, and you're thinking, oh, that's interesting. I wonder where that's from. Um, yeah, that means there's stealth units that have been damaged right there. Uh, these stealth tanks, they're getting awfully close, though. Oh, they are spotted by some sort of detection system. I'm not sure exactly where that is, but it is out there somewhere. And it can see these bad boys. And the team will note them. trying to find a way out of this detector's range here, out of this detector's field of view. A couple of them make it into the back lines here. And they're shut down really quickly. Ticks are routed in this direction as well to detect the rest of them. And indeed, the, the rest of these Gremlin tanks will be, uh, will be consigned to their fate. Where is that unit detector? Ah, here it is. Can you see the radius on this thing? I guess not. It, when you place it down, you can see the radius of that, where, where it actually detects units from. Um, it's usually, usually quite large. Wow. Laughing, doing a great job of spreading himself all the way across the map, making sure that unit presence is pushed through wherever it's needed. Everywhere that, well, it's needed. <laughs> uh, more and more of these hounds, though. This, we're, we're sticking on this hound-based army, but it's perfect for countering this, uh, this T1 spam that's coming out here. We've got the Graveyard of the Titans over here. EMP missile. Good enough to stun a Razorback. Wonder how it does against a Titan. This Titan's pretty stunned, so uh, might might be might be these missiles doing good work over here. About 50% stun on a Titan sounds about right. Oh, but this this uh, this this lag is pretty. Uh, well, we're chugging along. <laughs> I don't see any sort of end end gamer maneuver here. Like, uh, there's there's a lot of economy, and we could do a lot of stuff, but I don't see any sort of. Uh, you know, no Nostradamus maneuvers, no, uh, no, no over nuke maneuvers. We're, we're just going for more and more units here, which is fine, but it's definitely prone to lag out your teammates here. It's lots of dragons. That could be quite interesting if we see these used here. EMP bombers on the front line, are they going to actually be useful? Uh, they're not dumb firing. They do paralyze most of this front line though, so that is very nice. Yeah, alright, very well done. A lot of the front line gets completely paralyzed. A lot of these vanguards get stuck in place. You cannot paralyze the horse. That that does not work, unfortunately. Or fortunately, I mean, I guess it makes sense, right? Like the lightning tank should basically never be able to be paralyzed. You can't EMP a lightning. That doesn't make sense. You just make more lightning. <laughs> you a nice close-up shot of this action sequence here. Thors and hounds fighting titans. EMP missile landed right there on that titan, but it just shook it off. No, thank you. We've got tick spam coming out up north. Again, we're not really achieving anything. We're just throwing units all over the place, but we're not actually managing to achieve a whole lot, which is sort of unfortunate here. Huge bomber run. Takes down a Titan. Very nicely done. Yeah, these uh, these these tier two bombers can definitely do quite a lot of damage when they're uh, built in mass. Oh, some fighters took those bombs. <laughs> Not sure if you saw that there, but the the bombers dropped their bombs right as fighters flew underneath them. Sacrificing their lives to protect their tit titanic brothers down beneath them. There's a lot of fighters, like individual fighters and, and players building fighters, but there's not a dedicated fighter player, so I think a Nostradamus maneuver would work well here. Um, yep, yeah, the Starlights are chain reacting with each other, as we've seen before. There they go. 
as brilliant as the morning sun. And in slow motion. <laughs> Down to 67% game speed. I, 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 it is beyond my abilities to speed up the game at this point. I can set it to 20x speed and there's nothing I can do because uh, there's just too many units to process at any given time. I'm not sure what kind of monstrous PC you'd need in order to run this game at full speed for these late game scenarios. You'd need, you'd need some sort of NASA computer for sure. I really hate that these units are just being wasted on the front line like this. They're not pushing forward, they're not really doing anything, they're just standing up here and they're just acting as cannon fodder for these hounds. Laughing, saying I can't spam by and help mid and save top. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, I think Trollhard GoPro is probably the player to name here as far as who we should be, who should be supporting top. We should definitely see some production out of this T3 gantry. 264 metal per second coming in. And that's definitely enough. Colossal warfare down here. I hope you like these big cinematic shots because uh, we've got plenty of them to go around. If we uh, toggle this camera vision here, and we just get down close and personal, and get right up in the action. Toggle off the overlay. My hand over here, sorry about bumping the mic there. Oh yeah. You know, it's one thing to have a game where all the units are squares and, and triangles and, you know, theoretical shapes. Um, it's a whole other thing when you can see the attention to detail put into every single one of these units here. Like, clearly a lot of love went into crafting every single one of these units. Somebody, somebody was consulted to design every single one of these. And it really just makes it feel that much more special when you get up close and you see that like the pawns are well constructed. They, they have like a shape to them and a rigidity. The blitzes, you know, they have moving treads and, and all these uh, little metal spots and everything. Just absolutely beautiful. Look at the fighters flying around in the background too. <laughs> That Titan is looking quite damaged. All right, let's hop out of this mode. Let's go back. Whoa, that's uh, that's the wrong one here. There we are. <laughs> We've got Ragnarok's building here. We're uh, we're trying to end this game. Laughing is anyway. Can this Ragnarok hit anything crucial? That is the question. Um, a little bit. It could target facilities over in this area. It could definitely target pink space. Hot pink space, anyway. So yeah, it can, uh, it can do a little bit of damage here. It can certainly put out a lot of damage on the front line, at the very least. I wonder if over here might have been a better position for it, although this is a lot more exposed, so maybe not. You can see the massive metal deposits here. 31,000, 11,000, 61,000. Yeah, we're just we're getting into uh, into these gargantuan numbers of metal that are just impossible to uh, impossible to deal with. The admiral is catching up. Yeah, that happens a lot in these games where you uh, you eventually lag out and you just are forced to catch up for a long while, and there's nothing you can do about it. We had an EMP missile come down from the Juno here. It almost hit all of these ticks. Oh, it did hit a lot of them. The wave went out and it hit a lot of these ticks, but uh, there's still a ton moving forward here. You can see the corpses of the ticks laying on the ground. That's quite funny. Or maybe it's quite sad, depending on your uh, your perspective on things. <laughs> a Thor is trying to bravely march through the front lines here, but it's being halted literally by a bunch of blitzes and other Thors, stopping it dead in its tracks. Come on, blast them. Not sure why these swords aren't blasting this one. I'd certainly think they'd be interested in blasting that Thor, but uh, maybe not. That's bad. We needed defenses in front. I'm not sure even exactly what they're talking about. Oh, they got the Ragnarok. That is really unfortunate. It's a ton of metal and, more importantly, a ton of time that was... Uh, Completely wasted there. 
You hate to see it, for sure. Wow. I mean, this battle is so perfectly balanced here. <laughs> what is the green player going for? We haven't seen much out of them yet. Or in a while, I should say. We have a bunch of Thors coming out at the moment, and we're just continuing the tech spam here. It looks like mostly uh, we're just eco, we're just eco fiending here. Just gonna keep building more and more energy production, more and more metal, as much as we possibly can. Swing as is nuking, nuking something. Uh, yeah, this is actually a really nice spot to nuke. There's no uh, no nuclear protection here. Also up here, that'd be nice. Not sure where we have the vision to nuke. I mean, of course you can send a nuke wherever you damn well please, but. I'm not sure if we know the, the proper location here. Wow, it looks like we basically placed it on top of the commander. <laughs> RTX is like, whoa, I did not prepare for nuclear warfare today. Hopefully gonna start up an anti-nuke real soon. <laughs> Nothing puts the fear of God in you quite like a nuclear explosion on your front doorstep. Now luckily those Titans can shake off nuclear explosions like they're nothing. We have another wall cannon coming up down here. The Ragnarok. Ready to Ragnarok and roll. We've got butlers assisting here, coming up in five and, well, more like six minutes. We're sending more and more air constructors, which is nice. I think that's uh, definitely going to be helpful here. We need a lot more. I'd love to see the whole team contributing on this. We could turn some of these uh, construction turrets. We could turn these over and... and have them start working on that facility as well. Another nuke comes down in the middle here. Wipes away a lot of units, but mostly just spam units. Easy to replace. Nothing incredibly critical. Mission critical, anyways. The Hound Army is marching forward, though. A lot of times when I'm watching these games, I'm trying to find some sort of screenshot, right? Some, some Something I can use for a thumbnail. And this entire game <laughs> has been nothing but thumbnailable shots here. This, no, this mode? There we are. That's pretty good right there. Look at that. You can see the Ragnarok coming up in the background here. And you have all of the artillery. Really, really nice. <laughs> I love how cinematic this game gets. Especially in the late game here. You can see these, uh, these, these flag cannons are dismantling the air wall, which makes me think that we're eventually going to be able to do a bombing run, although there's these huge fighter blobs <laughs> all around the map here, just three of them. Uh, so if we could take down at least one of those, I think we would be in a phenomenal position here, but the, the green fighter wall going down is also very, very nice. It does mean that we're going to be able to sneak through some, uh, some units here and there. This Ragnarok is much more protected, so I think this has a better better chance of coming online. We've got three minutes to go on that one. Three minutes, although it's more it's gonna be more like six minutes for us because the game is moving at half speed. This is uh this is what happens, you know, you do this to yourself when you play these ultra long games. <laughs> you don't go for any win condition. Just more units. You could you, you you start paying for those units in, in game ticks rather than metal. Metal becomes arbitrary. See, wow, look at these economies back here. In case anybody, by the way, was looking for a, uh, a example of how to build a really, really well-scaled economy. I mean, it doesn't get much better than this. You just build a bunch of build power and you cram as many advanced fusion reactors and energy converters as you possibly can into that space. Really nicely done by Purple, by the way, for rebuilding here. They were knocked almost entirely out of the game. The light blue as well, I believe. Or no, 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 not light blue. It was whoever was down here. I can't remember. I think it was Teriyaki. Oh, Teriyaki actually has not resigned from the game, but does not have any presence here. Love to see a, uh, a constructor handed over to them. They might like to get back into this game sometime soon. A little bit of a scouting push here, but it is mostly shot down by a whole bunch of fighters. Easily dismantling those T1 fighters. Very nicely done. It's a lot of stealth tanks. Yeah, those stores moved out of position, and so these ticks are actually running right past. They're not doing a tremendous amount of damage at the moment, but it certainly means that these stealth tanks are well aware of exactly where they can move around on the map. 
and they could certainly just go right after this T3 facility. No reason why not. I think I'd love to see that. Are these landed fighters? I didn't even know you could do that. I don't think I've ever seen landed fighters before. Huh. Well, that's rather interesting. Titan on the front line, giving its life, valiantly sacrificing its life for the greater good. Oh, Anuk did find this production facility. That was a huge T1 production facility here. Also, RTX took another nuke to the head. Ah, <laughs> uh, looks like those, those stealth tanks were found out after all. And did not manage to do too much damage in the end. Some ticks have leaked through though, and they're starting to cause a lot of problems. The, uh, the, the Thors up north have been pushing forward as well. Another big problem down south, though. EMP bombers trying to EMP a, uh, <laughs> EMP a Thor, discovering that that's not really possible. EMPing these Titans is much better. We're EMPing our own units more than the enemies, though. Fighters are out now, and they're going to help clean up this huge mess. We have T1 spam, T1 vehicle spam coming out here. Really interesting. That's uh, that's a, tr uh, I mean, just a gargantuan use of metal. Don't know if it's worth it. I would probably say no. Uh oh, some runaway Thors have broken through the lines here. One of them is looking pretty unhealthy, but the other is looking quite nice. 77% on that bad boy. Could certainly do some damage if it goes in the right direction. It isn't though, it's not headed towards the spam facilities, it's headed right into a Razorback's arms. A Razorback's loving arms. Ooh, Kidro is risen just to be taken down once more. <laughs> that really hurts. Uh, the Thor is getting dangerously close over here. I don't know why it's heading towards the units though, it needs to turn, it needs to take a sharp right turn. We, uh, we paralyzed the incomplete cannon over here. Interesting decision. Can you not build things that are paralyzed? Well, we're gonna self-destruct the Thor. We self-destructed. Ah, it does not do a big explosion, though. That's kind of unfortunate. I thought we had it there. Won't matter, though. A bunch of Titans are pushing forward, and indeed, the second attempt at a lol cannon is completely shut down. Meanwhile, the red lol cannon is up and running. Well, it's up, anyway. It's not running yet. <laughs> Guess we forgot about it over here. We were too busy microwing it talking about units. Oh, there's a Thor in the back line. Not sure how that got there. Hornets are uh, routed over to try and deal with that. Ah, and the, the lull cannon begins to fire. The Ragnarok brings about the end of the world. This one, yeah, this one has a very nice range. You can take out a lot of these green facilities here. You can shoot all the way back to... I'm struggling to find its line, actually. Ah, oh, it's right here. So yeah, you can shoot all the way down here, you can shoot all the way over to the light blue base here, you can shoot all of dark green, most of dark green anyway. Yeah, this cannon's in a really nice spot. A lot of damage happening right here. This mountain luckily tanking a whole lot of it. <laughs> yeah, every one of these that falls is dealing quite a bit of damage to every one of these facilities here. Fusion reactor in a lot of trouble, the advanced fusion reactor in a lot of trouble as well. raining terror. Oh, I wonder if we're aiming for this anti-nuke. That makes sense. That is the only anti-nuke protecting this facility here. So we could definitely go for a nuke. Does Red have any nukes? I don't think so. Another anti-nuke has started up. Maybe it was finished already. Maybe I missed it. But luckily this area is still covered in anti-nukes, so that's not going to quite work here. We're aiming for this geothermal battery. Geothermal uh, power plant, I mean. It's really important that this Ragnarok gets a lot of damage done. This team's success kind of hinges on this thing being able to, uh, being able to succeed. I wonder if it can shoot over here. It looks like it can. Yeah, it has the ability to shoot over here, but it, it's, uh, it, it's gonna be kind of based on luck. Nuclear bombers are out to try and take down this Titan. 
they do uh, they do a decent job here. Couple couple percent off each time. Nicely done. Oh, the fighters are here. <laughs> they want to hunt those EMP bombers, certainly. Yep, those fighters, they're going to get them, too. Yeah, they managed to take down quite a lot of those fighters, or well, quite a lot of those nuclear bombers. All of them, I think, actually. Take down some of these construction turrets as well, or construction uh, drones, rather. The construction aircraft, that's the word for them. Green's productions have been semi-halted, but not really. The tick spam is still immense. And they're still causing problems for these vanguards as they are forced to fire on themselves and their friends in order to deal with the tech menace. Fighters are out and they're going to shoot down a lot of these uh, a lot of these gunships here. Whoa! <laughs> All right, looks like uh, Bing Bing Bang has either quit or lagged out. Uh, looks like it's the latter has lagged out of this game, and now Evolved Monkey makes up the entire northern half of the map. <laughs> the store was desperately trying to get towards the Ragnarok, but it does not find it. The Ragnarok continuing to fire on that geothermal power plant, but it has been destroyed. At this point, I'm not sure what we're firing at here. Does Evolved Monkey have vision? Oh, a nuke goes down right there. That was quite nice. Not a lot of vision on this green player here. A nuke somehow pushed forward to this, this area of the map. And, uh, yeah, it looks like that managed to wipe away a big part of Blue's facilities here. Fighters push forward. I don't know if they found this Ragnarok that's coming up here for the green player. We're at, uh, 4 minutes and 30 seconds left on that bad boy. It's gonna be a while. Meanwhile, down south, the push was held, and now the blue army is retaliating. Blue fighting on many fronts at once. The middle of the map, actually strangely exposed. From both teams, really. I mean, there's a lot of vanguards and thors up here, but this southern section is mostly just fiends and grunts, so... A lot of, a lot of T1, T2, but no T3. Pulsar's here, laying down long-range fire. Titans taking these hits from the vanguards. It's about two percent per hit from those vanguards, so they're definitely a, uh, a nice damage over time option against these titans. Might even be like one or two percent. Wow! Look at that. The vanguard rain. <laughs> wow. The fighters push forward. Trying to get a get, get a good engagement here. Get a good. Trying to get a good engagement here, but it's uh, it's difficult. The red player of all monkey is now in charge of a whole lot of army here. Basically, basically responsible for a massive amount of this map. Bing Bing Bang asking for some of the uh, production back. Laughing says poking a hole. I think he means the uh, marauders up north here. Um, yeah, they're actually moving pretty far forward. Very nice to see. Although that's a ton of hornets. Yeah, these hornets can be quite good at shutting down any kind of aggression. So I think that will be mopped up shortly. Meanwhile, the vanguards down south are having a field day, laying down infinite firepower into these uh, into these units here. This is quite a stalemate. How do we break stalemates like this? This is a learning opportunity. We'll uh, we'll talk about this in other videos. There's also another video talking about learning the endgame. But in case you uh, in case you want to know, there's there's a few options that you can go for when you're in this late game here. A Ragnarok is one of them. That's always it's always a, a decent option, but it's sort of positional, and you need a lot of build power in one place in order to do it. Uh, you also need good scouting information to fire it. Uh, any sort of mass air play is going to also work really well, so get a huge array of construction turrets, like something that looks like this, um, and then just hook up two of these advanced uh, aircraft plants, the Tech 2 aircraft plants, and start producing bombers, fighters, 
uh, gunships, dragons, EMP bombers, nuclear bombers, whatever you can make out of it. You're going to have the late game economy, so make whatever you can for the most amount of money that you can. And uh, most amount of metal you can, I guess. We don't have money in this game, we have metal. Uh, and then produce mass air, and eventually you're just going to have so much that it won't matter how many anti-air turrets they have, it won't matter how many flak turrets they have, how many flak cannons, it, it just won't matter. There's just not a, a way that they can keep up with the production, and eventually you're going to overwhelm them with airplay. Um, the other is going for mass nuke. That's one that we see a lot, where you just spam 15, 20, 25 nukes, and eventually you get into these numbers that are just so gargantuan that they can pierce through any amount of anti-nuke. Uh, which means that you're going to be able to start eventually blasting down bases one by one. We can see the Ragnarok here has been sort of unhelpful. Like, we took out a few of the bases and a few preliminary production structures, but we really haven't been able to hit anything critical. And mostly, I think that's because there was, uh... Well, it's, it, it's just too far back. There's not, there's not a great spot to put a Ragnarok. It's not, you know, it's not a Vault Monkey's fault, but there's... This thing is so far back, it's just the only good place to put it. Because otherwise, if you don't put it on one of these mountains, it can't shoot over and it can't hit anything. Uh, but if you don't put it on one of these mountains, then there's not, it, it's going to be obstructed by them. It's not a great place to put it. We have a enemy Ragnarok here. <laughs> yeah, indeed, going to be firing on the uh, the other Ragnarok, trying to pierce its its shields. Um, and pierce its shields, it will. These, these uh, plasma shields can only hold up for so long. The Ragnarok is a devastating tool of siege. And we see one by one these shields start to fail. This outer shield failing first and these inner, inner ones taking some damage as well. Oh no, we've got deflectors here. <laughs> we've got plasma deflectors, which means that these plasma shots can be arced in all sorts of crazy ways. Uh-oh, and indeed, some of these are going to land in the back line and cause a lot of problems here. Oh, that's really dangerous. Now, luckily, a lot of these are bursting mid-air. Uh, but otherwise, this could be really, really dangerous. Especially as these shields start to fail and they're not as powerful anymore. Some of these might be glanced off at really, really un unpopular angles. Really, really unhelpful angles. Uh, the green team's Ragnarok is piercing the shields before the uh, the red one can, though, and so the red Ragnarok is actually in quite a lot of trouble. Shields are slowly being taken down, which means that every shot gets a little bit closer to piercing the overall bubble. Indeed, one at a time, these, these plasma shields have fallen. The Ragnarok is piercing through them. Similarly, we do have the, the, the shots eventually piercing this Ragnarok's field, but also we have these other deflectors which are slowing down the shots, trying to keep them at bay. Ah, uh, Nuke does wipe out a lot of that facility, though. Look at all these units laying about on the middle of the field. Do I even dare? Let's take a look. 205,000 metal in this massive field right here. I bet it's mostly just all of this right here, but uh, what an absolute gargantuan amount of metal. Oh, a lot of these constructors get a little too close to the exploding plasma shots here, and they, are get, they do get taken down by artillery fire, of all things. <laughs> Watching these Ragnarok battles. Absolutely epic. We're not stalling on energy, we're just at 0.54 game speed. <laughs> There's just no way to deal with all this. Oh, I see. Yeah, there was a big explosion back here. I didn't even notice. I was too focused on the wall cannons. The explosion happened in slow motion. Yeah, so it's exactly what he said in chat. The uh, the shots, they ricocheted off these plasma shields, landed in the back line, hit something back here, caused a big chain reaction that it, it basically exploded all of uh, Laughing's production here. So in a roundabout sense, the uh, Ragnarok did eventually do its job. <laughs> it took out one of the big economy centers here. But certainly it could have done a whole lot more. Could have probably taken out Green's production facilities. 
It's surprising you didn't chain react this direction as well. Blow up all this stuff. I wish I could speed this up. I really do. <laughs> we see these stalemates and it, uh, it just reminds you that getting good at the late game is really important because uh, this, uh, this, this is where you're caught in these games where you basically can't even participate if you don't have a PC built by NASA or the Lord himself. Massive bombing runs to take down these T3 units, instantly evaporating them, turning them into nothing but slag to be mixed with the Earth. This Ragnarok does not have a great firing angle. I can't really shoot too far into anybody's base back here. There's an advanced fusion reactor right here. I guess I could hit that. Not that that would be crippling to take that down, but uh, I suppose it's an option. Tons of resbots here working on bringing back all these units. I think that's very nice. We're trying to get uh, we're trying to get laughing back in the game. The blue team is. I think if there's ever a time to collapse on this army and try and do some damage, it'd be right now. I'm surprised how little juggernauts we've seen on the field. Are there no? Hold on, it just occurred to me. This this team has no cortex commanders. <laughs> no cortex production of any kind, actually. Huh. I hadn't noticed that at first, but yeah, we were a purely Armada team here. Ooh, some Titans have broken into the back lines. Really nicely done. The Admiral managing to sneak some Titans through. Very nice. Hopefully these can get quite a lot of damage done. They have to fight upstream, but uh, I mean, those, those pawns are basically just tickling these Titans here. Nuclear bombers coming out here. Ooh, they take a lot of damage from the flak. And as well, the light anti-air turrets. But we will chug along, just like the Titans will. The one up north does go down to another Titan. Managed to stop it just before I got into the eco center back here. This Titan has found an advanced geothermal plant. Which will quickly evaporate all of the static defense back here. And this Titan is moving forward. Now there is a commander here, so we can degun this Titan. That's always an option. It's probably a good option at this point. But yeah, these Titans are suddenly breaking the stalemate back here. Oh, the Titans stopped moving, so this commander was actually able to move over and degun it. Very nicely done. Another Titan right here, and it looks like this one will be degunned as well by Birdie. Very nicely done. Everything in slow motion here. I wish there was a way to increase the frame rate. Maybe there's a mod that can optimize it or something. I'll have to take a look at that. Now the Ragnarok starts up. This one has been uh, largely unuseful since it was used to destroy this Ragnarok. That was kind of its purpose. <laughs> it was a counter Ragnarok Ragnarok. If such a thing could be believed. Whoa, that's a huge amount of bombers. These need to be spread out though. Or maybe not. There's so many fighters, though. These are eventually going to go down, right? These can't get in. There's no way. Okay. Yeah, they will eventually be shot down. I was sort of hopeful. I thought we might have something here. It will do a lot of damage when they crash onto the ground. <laughs> but luckily, Tan had enough player or enough fighters here in order to clean up that whole mess. Loads of light gunships. Wow. That's uh, 34 light gunships. Interesting. Nuke. That's interesting. That doesn't seem like a very good place to put a nuke. That seems very, very danger close. This is the real trouble, though. We have tons of these units pushing forward on the southern hide, southern side, southern hide, southern side, southern part of the map. You get the idea. All these uh, T1 tanks are. I mean, they're not great, and the Thors can melt them really easily. But they have enough health that they can just enough of them can keep rolling through. <laughs> one by one, they will eventually get through. This is a much better target for a nuke, I would think. Oh, we do see some of these Ragnarok shots. 
skimming across here, starting to wear away at some of these shields. I do like to see that we're eventually targeting something a little bit more productive with that $61,000 Gatling gun. Nuke has gone down over here. Huge fighter wall comes out over here. This is really where the game is told, is in these res bots here. First of all, I think these need to be on a massive res command. Just resurrect anything in this entire field here. Huge nuke blows away a massive amount of army. All those particles to render. <laughs> and ultimately this line is pushed back, but it's not caved in. Oh, there is a Cortex player out. This, uh, this light green player, RTX here. I think it's time we start spamming juggernauts. I really do. We have three T3 facilities. Sorry, four T3 facilities. The experimental gantries here. And uh, none of them are producing juggernauts. We're just doing catapults. Those will take about 30 years to get to the front line at this game speed. <laughs> We very well might be at the uh, the unit limit here. There is a there is a finite unit limit per player in Beyond All Reason, um, and it's something like a thousand units or something. It's really really difficult to hit uh, until you get to the late game, and then you can <laughs> you can produce more units than you could ever imagine possible, um, and that's what that's what we're seeing here. Now the middle of the map does look fairly exposed here. Whoa, that's a huge Titan army as well. That's uh, 14 Titans and accompanying support vehicles, support uh, support units. Yeah, I think the middle of the map is where you want to be. I mean, there's a there's a few Thors here and there in the middle of the map, but yeah, I mean, look at these these techs are actually managing to break through a lot of the middle of this map here. The Ragnarok actually starting to fire on this this big army of hounds. This is probably reserved from the the early game. But very nice of them. Look at those lasers shining up. They look like the the Hollywood lights, the big spotlights. <laughs> We've got a nice little bombing run coming out here. Loads of fighters. Fighter escort for these bombers, very nicely done. Ooh, the bombers are kind of unguarded now though. Okay, there we go. The fighters do turn their heads and start to uh, make their way. Protect these bombers at all costs. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of anti-air over here. Yeah, these bombers are definitely going to get pretty far. Oh, they're going to get it. Oh, I'm going to do it. They know exactly where the APHIS is. They're going for it. Oh, we have flak back here. We do have flak indeed. Wah, wah, wah. And those bombers will come tumbling down to the ground. It was an excellent idea, we just needed about 400 more bombers. <laughs> hey, hey, top. Oh yeah, there's tons of fighters over here, tons of these, uh, tons of these, uh, gunships. It's a good use of the fighters, I would love to see them sent out there. They were busy a little bit with that bombing run down south, which is understandable. This uh, salmon-colored player is in a lot of trouble here. It looks like their base has been ravaged by this Ragnarok, loosing wild shots in their direction, and uh, their plasma plasma deflectors could not keep up with them. Get it? Get it? <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised by the lack of nukes, though. I really thought we would have gone for a whole lot more than just what we see here. Six nuclear chambers. Um, oh, did we just start some? Oh, man. Man, am I good. <laughs> Man, am I good. 
Yeah, we see these catapults on the front lines. These are absolutely devastating, especially when you get them in big numbers like this. You can watch the little volley of rockets that they fire here. It is tremendous. Melting down any unit that is unfortunate enough to stand in its path. Shredding percentage off of this, this thing's life every second. Looks like that Titan push was held though. Enough Thors were brought to the front line. It's a 74 minute game, but it's gone on for nearly twice that length now. <laughs> Considering how, uh, oh boy, considering how slow everything is moving here. I don't know if I can cast much more of these. I, th these are really difficult to get through because uh, the late, late into this cast, it's very, very difficult to find the words to describe just how, how much is happening on the screen at once. And it's really hard to get into an individual battle. Uh, but let me know how you feel if you made it this far. I definitely trust your opinion. <laughs> Although maybe if you made it this far, you enjoy this long content, and I'm not uh, not really uh, not really diversifying my my selection pool here. Again, there's more flack out and about. This area looks really exposed, though. We could definitely go after some of this, but I don't know if we have that scouted yet. I doubt it. Red versus purple. <laughs> I think people are complaining in the chat here. One and a half hour game. Yeah. <laughs> Not wrong. Keep it up. We are winning, hopefully. Winning, hopefully, is hopefully the key word right there, right? Titan goes down. Wow, we finally learned to split up our starlights. That's quite nice. Those are going to finally stop chain reacting with each other and exploding. Very nice to see. find something that spam doesn't get game breaking. Yeah, I think uh, the, the answer to that is probably lowering the unit limit. That'd be my suggestion here. I don't really want to supply cap like StarCraft has, because that feels like you uh, you cap out way too early, and that's kind of the spectacle of this game, is you can make so many units. But definitely we can lower it from 1,000 to like 500 or something like that. Just so that there's not this, uh, you know, there's not this, this half-speed gameplay for two and a half hours. <laughs> Man, I can't even join the game no more. Yeah, you see these long ones and it's not even worth trying to rejoin the game because uh, there's no way you're going to catch up to the end game. The middle of this map is slowly starting to cave under these catapults though. There's so many grunts that could just be moving forward here. We see a lot of blitzes moving forward, that's quite nice. But I don't know why we don't just move everything forward. The fighters are on the prowl. Ready to take down these gunships wherever they can. It's hard to tell how good an engagement you're getting when you're, uh, when you're telling fighters to go in. It's almost always a suicide mission and really difficult to gauge how good of an engagement you've actually got on your hands. I think that worked out pretty well for the blue team, though. They managed to take down at least a significant chunk of the, uh, the air wall here. Oh, these catapults land some devastating shots. All of those hounds melt away. Really nice. Very, very good stuff. these all one by one. Oh, that's no good. We're launching six nukes, but one by one. So it's just, it's not a whole lot of point there. Wow, it does wipe away that army. Man, I was so hopeful. I thought we were going to get to an end here. <laughs> thought we were going to get to an end here, but unfortunately, we just had to go and nuke the army. <laughs> 
No, I'm only kidding, of course. That was a very good play. Did manage to wipe away a lot of that stuff. Uh, speaking of nukes, I'd love to see some over here as well. Also, can we get rid of all of this, right? Can we, can we either eat up all of these tanks or resurrect them? Something, do something with those wreckages, because they're rather cluttering my vision. I don't like that. Swings saying, build nukes. I mean, at this point, I'll take anything. Build nukes, build bombers, build fighters, build whatever you have to. Somebody build something. <laughs> Clearly, these ground forces are not cutting it. At this point, at this point, if I was one of these players, maybe uh, maybe the Admiral is a good player to to choose here because they just have a T1 spam, which is not very expensive. You just spread that out across the map, let those units run, and then you just start building up a Nostradamus maneuver or a uh, you know maybe, maybe build up a, uh, a a massive bomber run. Something Birdie says, perhaps we can call it a draw. I doubt they're going to agree to that. <laughs> After fighting so hard and for so long, nobody would want to call a draw here. Nah, draws for sissies. <laughs> How will we finish this game? I do not know. from a commander here. I was just watching the Titans fire away, but the D-Gun commander moves in at the last second, and it's just the D-Gun it down. Very nice. Very efficient way of dealing with that. We don't play no draw here, mate. Until someone's PC burned. <laughs> Maybe this was the game that took the servers offline just the other day. This was the reason for it. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. As far as uh, who, should, who should be in charge of producing things. Since the Admiral already has these air, air labs out and running, producing fighters, I'd love to see them switch to doing some sort of mass fighter play. We just need to harass on more fronts than we currently can. We're, we're basically at the maximum for the ability to harass in terms of the ground units here, right? Missiles firing away. Thor's aplenty. Yeah, I'm still surprised that we don't see Juggernauts coming out, though. I feel like that's something that we should definitely see. This is, this is like, for the most part, just an armada battle. <laughs> as much armada as I've ever seen. Elm appears to be done with the, uh, the Ragnarok firing on his base. <laughs> In these kind of games, everyone loses, yeah. <laughs> Not not terribly incorrect. I mean like what do you what do you how do you even continue this game? Most people don't have a PC strong enough to even run this game at this point. It is it is intense at my computer I can I can hear it right now, whining overtime. The the fans are on full blast. <laughs> this bottom path keeps going back and forth here, but never anybody winning it. It's so unfortunate. It's almost, it's almost like warfare by frame harassment. <laughs> you're not, uh, you're not trying to kill their units anymore. You're trying to kill their computer. Look how slowly everything is marching. Ugh. Commander battle at North Pond. The last man standing. <laughs> Road to point two. Yeah, he's talking about the game speed here. We're now down below half game speed. So it's no surprise that this game is chugging at this point. So odd. I've, 
never uh, I've never seen somebody do that. Look at this, look at this one fighter spiraling out of control here. <laughs> it's so cinematic, even if it's at 10 frames a second. push looked good, but now there's just so many Thors, and all this is going to get resurrected and sent back the other way. Uh, it's just an infinite back and forth. Laughing is starting up their economy again. They were severely hindered. I think that's what I would love to see. Maybe maybe laughing. They were, they were basically wiped out of the game. I would love to see them stop this spam and just tech up to a point where they can go for some sort of crazy airplay. Something, I don't know, something drastic. Something drastic needs to be done. We're not thinking big enough here. <laughs> so choppy, I can't even move the camera around slowly anymore. Or, uh, smoothly, I mean. Oh. We finally found a production center and we're firing on it with the Ragnarok. Oh, I take it back. <laughs> we were firing on it with the Ragnarok. Looks like we have, uh, we've given up on that here. The middle of the map is collapsing, though. Very slowly at a 0.43 speed, <laughs> but it is collapsing nonetheless. Ah oh, man, if we just saw all these grunts move forward, we could definitely push through here. We have all these grunts from RTX would just march through this map right up this southern lane, they would get right into the base of Evolved Monkey and they could do a tremendous amount of damage here. Ragnarok trying to lay down suppressive fire on these Thors, but uh, they're pretty tanky. They are tanks after all. Yes, the grunts march forward. Oh my goodness, we might actually be here. This might actually be it. <laughs> oh man, so many of those grunts explode in the, uh, the chain reaction from that starlight there. Thors and catapults working together. Cursed but beautiful. To try to break this stalemate right down the middle of this map. Oh, we can see the units deflect down south too. Any of these chain react right here, and it would be game over. Yes, keep moving, please. No, don't stop the grunts. Don't stop addicted to the shindig. Most of these grunts can't even fire at this point. I think the green army might do it. RTX is pushing forward. We're getting somewhere, folks. The Admiral letting out a battle chat. A battle chant, rather. <laughs> Let's go, 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 go. Keep it up. Morale is high for the blue team. Cuverti says GG. Uh, a little bit early, but it's getting there. These units are pushing forward pretty far. Oh, we have ticks chain reacting a whole bunch of these, uh, whole bunch of these construction turrets here. Very nicely done. A lot of units in the back line here. Commander goes down. These doors are getting dangerously close. I think we've done it. I think we found it. 74 minutes into a game, although more like two hours. <laughs> uh, I think I'd better link to this spot, right? I better let people know where the end of this game so they can jump to it if they'd like. Come on, Thors. Do your magic. Chain React, just a single hit. Yes! Yes, the base for Swing is finally lights up. A huge portion of it anyway. A lot of the energy product, the metal, uh, the energy converters do go down. Come on, go for the advanced fusion reactors. We're moving Thors forward as well. Move some of these in here, move some of them out there. We've got units in the back line. We've got ticks harassing all this. Some gold, ge gold star general ticks. <laughs> Where are they going?
Please, Dex, just continue your assault. That's all I ask of you. This Titan is dangerous and close here. Target the Aphis. Target the Aphis. Oh, that's nice. That brings that brings the Aphis really low. Yes, yeah, just one plasma blast. One more shot. And it all lights up. One player down. Swing as is removed from the game. Things are finally starting to collapse. <laughs> this is the end. We got him, boys. We can't resign. It won't work. Maybe there was a, a resign vote call it, but they weren't able to push it through. Wow, and after all that, we finally arrive here. These uh, these ticks putting in the work. <laughs> this one single-handedly bringing this down to 94%. I think we'd have better luck if we uh, chain reacted these energy converters here. Although I don't know if Mole Man even knows that there are ticks in this back line here. He did just move his mouse across here, so he should be aware of them. Ah, and the red team finally decides to give in under all that pressure. The the green team is streaming right down the middle. Who would have thought it'd be the direct middle of the map that eventually ends up caving? Wow, what a long one. Uh, if you're still watching to the end of this video, thank you so much. It really means the world to me. I uh, can only can only say thank you for sticking through such a tremendously long battle here. 4.42 game speed at the end there. Absolutely devastating. Congratulations to the blue team. That was a long one. That was the, the game ever, for sure. <laughs> and the last of the red units goes down. 100,000 million. 302 million resources produced. <laughs> What do these graphs look like? Oh my goodness. Absolutely phenomenal eco scaling. You can see right here is where blue took that big hit. <laughs> yep, things went downhill from there. The eco scaling did not continue. Wow. Thanks a ton for watching, you lovely viewer right there. Yes, you. So happy that you could join me today on this extremely long, whoops, this extremely long battle. Look at these resources production, or these uh, damage, damage dealt. There's a resource production. Metal produced, yeah. We're up in the we're up in the millions range. Absolutely tremendous. And I will see you in the next video.